Hi, this is lesson number 11 on probability, and in this lesson we study continuous random variables. In our last lesson, we studied discrete random variables, and we actually said if we had a discrete random variable y, the probabilistic distribution of this discrete random variable y can be explained by what we call the probability mass function, p of y of little y, for all y which is in the support of the random variable y. And we said p of y of little y, which is the PMF, the probability mass function, is always greater than or equal to zero, and that the sum all over y and the support of the random variable y of the PMF is equal to one. For example, if y takes values, let's say script y is equal to one, two, or Three and p of y of 1 is 0.3, let's say p of y of 2 is 0.6, and p of y of 3 is 0.1, so they sum to 1. I can plot the PMF, okay, for y is equal to 1, the PMF is 0.3, so I have that point, for y is equal to 2, the PMF is 0.6, that point there, and for y is equal to 3, the PMF is 0.1, somewhere down here. So I have discrete points, okay, describing the probabilistic property of this random variable y. But continuous random variables don't take discrete points, or they don't take countable number of values, they take values in continuous intervals. Consider I have a continuous random variable x. All right. This random variable x takes values in a continuous interval. So therefore, instead of a function that assigns probability masses like that, at some discrete points, what I need is actually a continuous function. Maybe a function like that. Okay. And for this random variable x, the continuous function I'm I'm going to call it f of x of little x, describes the probabilistic property of the random variable. And we actually call this function the probability density function. Okay, the probability density function or the PDF. So the PDF of a random variable, which is continuous, describes the probabilistic property of that random variable. And often what we are interested in when we have a continuous random variable is the probability that that continuous random variable x takes a value between let's say points a and b. Okay, That is if I have a point a here, maybe I have a point b here, I'm interested in the probability that my random variable is between the point a and point b and that probability is actually equal to the area between a and b under the function f of x. And if you've done your integrals, you know that the area under a curve is the integral from that point a to that point b of f of x dx. An example of such a PDF is uh, let's say we have a random variable x, which is described by the PDF, which is e to the negative x, for values of x greater than zero. Okay, As you can see, this function is only defined for values of x greater than zero. So what that tells me is that the support of this random variable x, which I'm going to denote by script x, is the set of values between zero and infinity, or the interval between 0 and infinity, and that is the support of the random variable x. Okay, And just like we had some properties of the PMF for a discrete random variable, we had a PMF satisfying that a PMF should always be greater than or equal to 0, and the sum over all the values in the support of the PMF is equal to 1. 
Now for a continuous random variable, we have the following properties. Okay. Properties of the PDF, the probability density function. Number one, the PDF should always be greater than or equal to zero for all values of x and the support, which I'm going to denote by script x. That is similar to this condition here. The PMF is greater than or equal to zero. And then here I have the PDF is greater than or equal to zero. And the second property is now, instead of the summation here, when you have discrete points, you can take the summation. But when you have a continuous function, instead of summation, what you do is you take the integral. The integral over all the support of the PDF, f of x dx, is equal to 1. So a valid PDF must satisfy these two conditions. Let's look at an example. Let's say I have a random variable x, which maybe is the time to failure in hours of a light bulb. So, time to failure. Let's say that's in hours. And I have a probability density function, f of x, which describes the property, the probabilistic property of that random variable x. And that PDF is equal to 2 over x plus 1 to the power of 3 for all values of x greater than or equal to 0. Now, the support of this random variable x is the interval from 0 to infinity. Now, what I want to know is, is this a valid PDF? If it's a valid PDF, it should satisfy the conditions 1 and 2 here. The first one is easy to see. Since x is always positive or equal to 0, for instance, if you plug in 0 in x, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 cubed is 1, 2 over 1 is 2, so that's positive. But if you plug in any other value, a positive number plus 1 is always positive. If you cube a positive number, you get a positive value. 2 divided by a positive number is always positive. Therefore, f of x is always greater than or equal to 0. The second condition says the integral over all the support of f of x dx should be equal to 1. So let me find this integral here. Since the support is 0 to infinity, so I have the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x, which is 2 divided by x plus 1 cubed dx. Utilizing power rule, I get this is equal to 2 divided by negative 2 times 1 over x plus 1 square. Limits from 0 to infinity. So that is equal to negative 1 times what happens when x goes to infinity. When x approaches infinity, this expression 1 over x plus 1 square goes to 0. 1 over infinity goes to 0. Minus, when x goes to 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. So that goes to 1. So I have negative 1 multiplied by negative 1, which is 1. Therefore, I have the second condition also satisfied. Since condition 1 and 2 are satisfied, now I can say that I have a valid PDF. But also, I could be interested in finding the probability that the time to failure is between, let's say, 1 hour and 5 hours. If you plot the PDF of that function that I gave you, you would find out that it's pretty similar to this graph. So that's f of x of little x, which is 2 over x plus 1 cubed. That's x. That's f of x. Finding the probability that x is between 1 and 5 is the same as finding the area under that curve between the points 1 and 5. 
okay, which is equal to the integral from 1 to 5 of the PDF, which is 2 over x plus 1 cubed dx. Utilize the power rule again, and that integral will be 2 divided by negative 2 times 1 over x plus 1 to the power of 2, lower limit of 1 and upper limit of 5. Plug in 5, you get minus 1 times 1 over 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 squared is 36. 1 over 36 minus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. This is equal to 1 over 4 minus 1 over 36, which simplifies to 2 over 9. Okay. Therefore, we find the probability that x is between 1 and 5. Okay, I'm going to finish this lecture or this lesson by talking about the cumulative distribution function. The cumulative distribution function, or the CDF. We talked about the cumulative distribution function for a discrete random variable in our last lesson. But since now we have a continuous random variable, Let's define it again. If I have a random variable x, which follows a probability density function given by f of x, then the CDF, which is denoted by capital F of x, is equal to the probability that x is less than or equal to little x for x, for any x in the real number line. Okay? That probability is, if you look at carefully, let's say that's the PDF, f of x, and let's say we have x here, and I take a point here, little x, the probability that x is less than or equal to little x here is the area under that curve less than that point. Okay, And by calculus, we know that that's the integral from negative infinity to little x of the PDF, which is f of x evaluated at u du. Okay, and that's the definition of the CDF, by the way. The integral negative infinity to x of f of x of u du. Let's do a specific example. Let's say we have a random variable x which follows the following probability density function 2 divided by x plus 1 cubed for x greater than or equal to 0. If you recall, we have drawn the PDF and it has the following form. Oops. That's the PDF, f of x. And I want to find the CDF, which is f of x of little x, which is the probability that x is less than or equal to x for any x in the real number system. So when I take for any x in the real number system, what I'm saying here is the CDF could be valid for any point in the real number system, even at the points where the PDF is not valid. So as you can see in this example, the PDF is only valid for values of x greater than 0, actually greater than or equal to 0. But I could find the CDF for any point in the real line, let's say that point, x0, or x0, and it turns out that for any value less than 0, in this example, for x less than 0, the CDF, which is the area under this curve, less than that point, okay, the area under the curve, under the PDF, less than x0, is 0 because we don't have a curve above this interval, negative infinity to x0. For x less than 0, the CDF, f of x of little x, is the integral from negative infinity to x of the PDF, f of u du. But f of u is not valid or it's non-existent for values of x less than 0 in that interval. So I have this value being equal to 0. Therefore, the CDF is 0. 
But for x greater than or equal to 0, the CDF would be, let's take an x here. All right, The CDF would be the area under this curve less than or equal to that little x. All right. Now, CDF in that case is, again, the integral from negative infinity to x of f of u du, which is equal to the integral negative infinity to 0 of f of x of u du plus the integral 0 to x. Okay. I'm getting the 0 because my support starts from 0, or the PDF is only valid for values of x greater than or equal to 0, f of x of u du. Now, this is going to be equal to 0. So I have this equal to the integral 0 to x of f of u du. All right? But the PDF for values of x greater than 0 is 2 divided by u plus 1 cubed du. I can do this integral, which would be 2 divided by negative 2 times 1 over u plus 1 square limits 0 to x. As u goes to x, I have negative 1 times 1 over x plus 1 squared minus when u goes to 0, this is going to be 0 plus 1, which is 1, 1 squared, 1, 1 divided by 1, which is 1. So therefore, this is equal to 1 minus 1 over x plus 1 squared. Therefore, the CDF for that random variable x is 0 for values of x less than 0, or it's 1 minus 1 over x plus 1 square for values of x greater than or equal to 0. If you plot the CDF, you would find the following. If you plot the CDF, so let's say that's x, it's the CDF f, you realize that the CDF is 0 all the way up to 0. But then it, it increases, but what happens is it never touches the line 1. Or in other words, the limit as x goes to infinity of the CDF, I leave that as an exercise for you, is equal to 1. And of course, this is a property for any CDF. The limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is 0. And the limit as x goes to infinity of the CDF is 1. Okay? A valid CDF has the following two properties. And also that the CDF is a non-decreasing function. It's a non-decreasing function. 